I was working at a company where we built and assembled our own aircraft. We made the same parts over and over and over again in batches of eight planes worth of parts at a time. We would set up a machine, make eight, 16, 24, 32 parts, and then tear down the job and set up on whatever was next. This worked out fine, but at some point, demand for our aircraft decreased and management wanted us to start only building two planes worth of parts at a time. Now this place was pretty chaotic when I started there and nothing was organized in the machine shop at all. Fixtures were everywhere, tools were everywhere, there was no inventory control on tooling, nothing was standardized, it was just a hot mess. Now I'd worked at this shop for about three months as the manager of CNC programming and I was working to get my own department's issues under control. But when I heard about the change they were making to our production schedule, I went to the manager of the machine shop and told him that we needed to make some major changes real quick or this was going to be a disaster. When he asked why, I told him that I had done a time study the week before and setups were taking around two hours for a simple three axis job. And with the decreased order quantities, the machinists were going to have to start doing five or more setups per day. Now most of you listening are probably saying to yourself, no way it took two hours to set up a three axis job. Well, it did. And that was an average, so sometimes it was actually worse. The shop was just that bad. When a guy needed to find a three-quarter end mill, he'd walk around to every desk and search for one, then go to all the other machinists and ask if they had one in their toolbox, and then come to find out we didn't even have one to begin with, and we'd have to rush delivery to get a tool the next day. I explained that in order to make this new production schedule work, we would need to create a storage area for fixtures that had coded locations, we would need to collect and inventory all of our tooling and start maintaining minimum stock levels, and we'd need to start pre-staging these items so that when a job was finished, everything the machine is needed for the next job would be right there at the machine to eliminate all the wasted time searching for things. The manager of the machine shop had no prior experience in machine but he was a smart guy that was open to change. So we came up with exactly how he wanted everything to work and he dedicated several from his team to execute the vision we set out. After implementing these changes, which took about a week and a lot of effort by several people, our changeovers began to average around 22 minutes. In addition to the time saved, it also cut down on stress as there were far fewer emergencies which required us to drop whatever we were doing to help search for something. I was reading through the comments recently on a video we put out and a fellow machinist asked if we could do a video on how to make a shop more efficient. At first, I laughed to myself because that's pretty much 90% of what we do here at Titans, whether it be tool tests designed to open your minds or showing versatile tooling you may not have seen before, or efficient fixturing techniques, or just videos like this where we talk about mindsets and past experiences. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized how easy it can be to make a huge impact to your bottom line if you just start paying attention to your processes. Every time I've ever thought to myself, man, this is taking way too long. I immediately stop and try to come up with some way to finish that task faster. And this is a conscious decision that you have to make to recognize it every time you notice an inefficiency. This can be anything you do throughout the day, from a tool path, to a tool, to a program, to setups, and everything in between. If you find yourself frustrated searching for something, stop right there and figure out how to never have to search for that item again. 5S, shadow boards, tool cribs, and any tool that helps your shop be more organized is going to pay for itself in a hurry. Conducting time studies can be such a simple process that you can have an intern do it for you. And there have been several times where I was shocked by the results of a time study because I had never personally observed the particular process myself and thus had no idea how out of control that process really was. A good understanding of time study data is also very important to adequately quote jobs. If you know it takes three minutes to set up a tool and you estimate the job will require 20 tools, you know you're going to have an hour of setup time. But if you just guess that every mill setup takes 15 minutes, you're going to end up not having the capacity that you thought you did and you could end up making late deliveries to the customer or having to pay out overtime to make up for the disparity between quoted hours and actual hours. The point that I'm trying to get across is that everyone in the shop starts making a conscious effort to identify potential areas for improvement in their day-to-day -day activities and discuss potential resolutions together, that can result in massive gains in efficiency with very little expense or effort. And if you're in a leadership position and your crew is unmotivated, offer them a challenge if your time study shows a problem. It can be so much more effective when you involve the entire team and say, for example, hey guys, I have no idea how to fix this. 
but I want to see if you guys can figure out a way to take this process from 30 minutes to 10. And if we succeed, then I'll give everyone incentive X. It's also incredibly important to listen to everyone's suggestions. And if they aren't feasible for whatever reason, you explain why. Nothing is worse than making an effort to make several improvement suggestions that are never implemented and you don't even know why. That's a huge motivation killer for people on the shop floor. Likewise, it's important to understand that for many shops, money is tight. So if you want to spend money to fix a problem, be prepared with an estimated return on investment and an explanation of why spending $1,000 today will save the company $10,000 a month. Once you have all the low-hanging fruit out of your way, you can start to look at more complicated or more expensive issues and start studying things like your tooling capabilities versus newer technology cutters, your programming strategies, your digital file management, your setup documentation, and whatever else feels like it's taken too long. As your processes become more and more refined, the company's profits will increase, employee stress will decrease, and shop culture will improve. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you guys again soon.